Oh, I was really expecting that to work. Oh well. Hey, it's been a while since we've last had a one-to-one. -one. Today we are talking all about absorption. And in no particular order, all of this. Don't worry, it really is bizarre enough to warrant this long-ass video. I'm sure you'll find it very absolutely a waste of your life. Yeah, me too. Alrighty then, let's see how knowledgeable you are at Dark Souls by answering this simple question. Here are all the damage types in the game. Which one is the most common? And I'll give you a hint, it is none of the elemental ones. Since you know that is uh, pretty obvious, perhaps pause the video and give it a good think. Or don't, you know, people never do. Alright, you done? If you said Frost, well done, you are in second place. But the most common damage type in Dark Souls 3 is Physical. Yeah, it is its own damage type. I mean, it's pretty misleading. From the way it's presented, it looks like a simple average of the other three types. But you can disprove that even here on the menu. On this helmet, you can't possibly reach an average of 4.4. I mean, two or less and the last one is equal, so it's impossible. And on the Witch Hat, the physical is just way higher than the other three. It's easy to find examples where the other three are all higher than the physical two. If only they formatted it a bit more like this, that would have helped a bit. But at this point, it might just be a tradition taken from Dark Souls 1. They presented it like this too. And you know, let's give Dark Souls 2 credit where it's due, since it neatly put them into two different sections. You poor, misunderstood creature. You are too pure for this world. So, let's see some proof that physical is the most common damage type. Here I have hacked everything but physical to 100%. So if we take damage, we know it's a physical attack. And as you can see, pretty much all attacks can freely hurt you. I'd say about 90% of non-elemental damage is physical. Makes you wonder why they even bothered the other three types. It is so much easier to demonstrate what isn't physical. So, let's hack in the reverse. So I'm only taking damage from Slash, Thrust, Strike and Elemental Damage. It is so rare that attacks are not physical, it is pretty much turning on God Mode. In fact, I'll put a little pop-up like this for any attack that isn't physical. Yeah, it's uh, pretty easy to edit in since it's so infrequent. <laughs> it, it really is quite shocking how much damage is considered physical. The humanoid enemies mix it up a bit, but not by too much. All sword and board enemies are pretty much physical with the occasional thrust poke or strike shield bash. In fact, speaking of exceptions, here are some damage trends I can share. If you're fighting crabos, they are mostly strike damage, but the water is physical, a bit like Generation 1 Pokemans. Skeletons are exclusively slashy, unlike other enemies of swords which are generally knights in physical with the occasional thrust attack. Even being immune to all damage types won't stop status effects such as bleed. And our old friends the Bumble Skeletons are strike only. But I'm sure by now you might have noticed something. Does split damage exist in PvE? Well, uh, yeah, <laughs> there is, but it ain't much. Split damage works like this. The physical damage types can never be combined together. Split damage cannot be a mix of these. So you can't be hit by an attack that is half slash, half physical. However, you can add any element to these four damage types. For example, pretty much all of Lorien's attacks are a physical fire split, so maxing both you do become Prince Proof. Most of the pontiff attacks are physical with either fire or magic added to them, depending on the sword you're struck by. His only non-physical move is his thrust magic poke here. So, by resisting physical and thrust, we can see how much the elemental damage does on its own. Excluding bosses, the only examples I noticed were the fire arrows, which are fire and thrust, and are all buds fire bombs. The damage is normally weighted too. The fire do 90% of the damage, the last little 10% of the pot being smashed against your face is physical. I suppose if your face is on fire, you know, the bits of pottery doesn't seem so bad. Let's cover player damage really quick and it behaves exactly as you might expect. If it's a slash, or detects a slash, everything that's a standard means physical, thrust is thrust obviously, and strike for strike. 
if it is a mix of two damage types, that just means the heavy attacks of the second type. It doesn't seem to mix and match between the blows. It is clearly divided between normal attacks and heavy attacks. But there is one exception. Backstairs. This is the beat encoding you've been waiting for. It is not like most monster grabs, which are overwhelmingly physical. Hitting the big strikey hammer that only does strike, the backstab will also do strike. Makes sense, uh, top marks lads, well done. Backstab of a frost weapon, it's frost, all good. Backstab of a physical, it's physical, etc etc. Backstab of weapon of two damage types, it would generally be the second. So as a general rule, whatever the damage type it deals, is the same for the backstabs, with one exception. Scimitars. <sighs> Looks like Rune Skimmies didn't get the memo. For whatever reason, despite only doing slash damage, they will do frost damage on the backstab. In fact, anything that is slash only and uses the stabby animation, like paired curved swords, will do frost. At first I thought it might be linked to the animation used, but these two gross swords share the same animation but will do different backstab damage types, according to the common sense we saw earlier. Digging any further into slash weapons causes all logic to go out the window. The slash only butcher's knife deals physical backstabs, but the slash only glaive does slash backstabs, fruit scythe does slash backstabs and slash damage in general. The damage you see me taking is from the magic split damage on the weapon. So to be certain, when you test it with a rusty old scythe instead of the same animation, it deals physical. I don't even. I was going to test this all a bit more, until we realised that the scythe doesn't even do slash damage on its normal attacks. You know, like the rest of them. But instead, it does strike damage. Come on, from <laughs> What is this shit? <sighs> so, split damage. Yeah, that actually works right. And just by looking at the fire bundles here, it contributes very little overall. So this is what 110 fire AR looks like. It is shockingly low on backstabs, about the same contribution as a normal slash. But Tokyo said it did about 23 damage if I remember right. So rip bundle only backstab builds. So let's finally move on to our final topic, environmental damage. Let's get the easy ones out of the way. Skeleton ball is physical, you know, but then again, what isn't? The dark pot still dark damage, one is dark spooky mist. There was magic damage of course, which is also the same element of all the spells of Aldridge slash Gwendolyn. I'm guessing the Dark Moon Covenant is more of a trendy name than anything else. And so finally, lava. Even Oman couldn't comprehend lava damage, since absorption did nearly nothing, but Iron Flesh did something, so I can confirm that bonfires do fire damage and fire only, you would still be staggered despite taking no damage. And at long, long last, lava deals fire damage and fire only, it isn't a mix of any sort. It is cool to see that when you're immune to a damage type, the flames won't even bother to show up. This is also true of bonus mist and any other element. So at long last, we know the secret behind Lava Corpse Man. And uh, yeah, well, I guess that's it. Thanks for letting me waste your time with uh, this useless shit. And uh, I've got some business to attend to, so uh, you can leave now. Or click these links. Or let me close this video for you. <laughs>